Welcome to the Trump of Zion broadcast brought to you each week by King of Saints Tabernacle, Cleveland, Texas. Today we are very glad to have a young lady here whose um, name is Dawn Brigance. And uh, Dawn, it was good to meet you and your family as the, as you began coming during our Feast of Tabernacles. Yes. And uh, your mama, your dad, your grandma, your children. And one night you asked to share your testimony, or it was actually after it was at a prayer meeting. Mm-hmm. And uh, Dawn, you, you have a tremendous testimony of what your faith in Yahweh has brought you through. And, you know, the Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And I believe not only did your testimony just really impact me dramatically, but many other people. And that's why I want you to share right now what the Lord has done in your life and uh, the things you've been through uh, because he brought you through them. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Dawn. Okay. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Hi. Um, yes, I've been through quite a bit. Um, starting out, I guess it would be, um, I was in the military for almost three years and was discharged medically after an injury. And, um, shortly after got pregnant with my first child and he was born with down syndrome, Mm -hmm. um, which wound up being a blessing. Um, within a year of that, I was pregnant with twins. Wow. Yes. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And they were three months premature. Um, but they got to come home and they were healthy and wonderful. Um, but when the twins were about five months old, my son, um, died in my arms, uh, essentially. Oh my goodness. What was, what was the issue with, with the child? Um, the autopsy just revealed SIDS, which is basically, they don't know. Um, I just know that we were taking a nap and he was sleeping on me and, when I woke up, he was not breathing, and he was blue, and I had to do CPR for 45 minutes. Oh, my goodness. Um, waiting on the ambulance. Mm-hmm. Um, unsuccessfully, but uh, that happened, and that almost destroyed me. Almost destroyed me. Mm, I can imagine. Um, well, I can't imagine <laughs> having a child. I've got six children. Of course, they're adults now, but... Uh, nothing like that ever happened uh, to have a child die in your arms. Um, yeah, it was, it was really, really rough. Uh, I, I lost faith, um, for a while and, um, eventually wound up checking myself into rehab because I formed a drug addiction to pain medicine in order to cope. Mm -hmm. Um, after that I was diagnosed, after I got out of rehab, shortly after I was diagnosed with um, a rare tumor disorder in my jaw and had surgery, a total jaw replacement, um, which I'm due for another one anytime now. Oh my goodness. And then last November, a year ago today, I was diagnosed with cancer, ovarian cancer. <laughs> oh my goodness. And um, fought that, had surgery successfully. Amen. God brought me through that too. But um, I, when I share my testimony, I, I share it as someone who's been in the lion's den um, someone who's tried to throw herself in the lion's den and someone who's been pulled out of the lion's den and, and is okay and strong and in love with God today. So you didn't, you didn't repudiate your faith in Yahweh and, and he undergirded you through all these horrible experiences mm, and yes. he's been there for you and has given you the victory. Yes, absolutely. Um, so there's not much you haven't faced on in your, your young <laughs> you know, life. I'm thinking about it, I, <clears throat> it's a whole lot when you sit down and you actually speak everything that's happened. But um, yeah, I've, I've faced a lot. But I think it's just God making me a great vessel and a tool. And Amen. Yeah. So your faith is still in in the Lord. He's your Absolutely. God, Absolutely. your Savior. You're zealous for His kingdom mm. and for Him. Absolutely. Yes, Amen. took the words out of my mouth. Absolutely. Amen. I believe it, Dawn. It's it's awesome. So you're you're living with your your parents right now? No, I'm living with my my um, my children. My um, my husband left um, not too long ago, but I'm living with my your children. Your husband and on top of everything else. <laughs> yes. Oh my good! I hadn't realized that. Um, 
That's okay. It's all right. We're going to be okay. <laughs> Amen. You have your children. I've met I do. them. I do have my children. They're wonderful, and we are making it day by day, and it's hard, and it's worth it. Amen. So. But you're still, your faith is in I'm, Yahweh. I'm in love with, I, I, absolutely. I am. I'm in love with Yahweh. I am in love with everything that I've been through, and I know that sounds strange, but mm. it, it, I don't know. I don't think I could love him the way that I do now if I hadn't experienced everything that I have. So he's brought you through all of these experiences, and you believe if he brought you, he can bring other people. Because, Don, we have to realize this broadcast goes out throughout the Houston Metroplex area, and there are many people that are struggling with not all the things you've faced. It's inc- One of them would be inadequate, but uh, so many heartaches and sorrows and but if you believe that if Yahweh kept you and mm-hmm. is with you still, that He is the answer to their problems as well. Without a doubt, yes, He's Amen. He's the answer to everything. Amen. <laughs> yes. So, um, did you want to? You have a poem there. You wanted to say a few things. Well, yeah. When I was going through, um, right. uh, when I was going through everything, I. I lost my faith a little, not my faith, but my, my fire. I lost the fire that I had um, for God, and, and I desperately wanted that back. And so I started, I sat down and I started um, writing, and it mm-hmm. just led me on this journey to, I don't know if it would be a poem or, or a story or what, but it's just my, it's just me on paper, I guess, and, and God's power of, of what he can bring us through and how he can do it. Amen. So you've got a poem that really had a tremendous impact on the people here. Did you want to go ahead and share that now? Sure. Dawn? Yes. <clears throat> um, Isaiah forty thirty one states that, bo- mm, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. Uh, one particular parable states that the eagle lives a relatively long life of 70 years. When the eagle completes around 40 years, a certain decadence sets in. Its wings become heavy with thick feathers. Flight becomes wearisome. The bird is not able to rise to its usual heights. Its claws lose their sharpness and grip, and hence even taking hold of prey becomes difficult. Its beak becomes bent and blunt, and it is at this point that the eagle makes a decision to follow his instincts or to slowly die. Instinct is the prime choice for most eagles, and so at this stage the bird takes off to a mountain and sits by itself at this lonely height. There it begins to pluck out all its tattered heavy feathers and eventually pulls out its dulled claws as well. Finally, it repeatedly strikes its beak against the rocks until it breaks the bent <clears throat> and blunted beak as well. Now shorn and stripped of its glory, it waits. Feathers begin to grow out. Claws begin to emerge strong and firm. A pointed and sharp beak is formed. And now when the eagle rises to fly, it soars to heights reached only once in its youth. This reminds us a lot of Christians. Um reminds us a lot of us as Christians, excuse me. Uh, You know, when we are weak, worn out, or struggling, ready to give up, and when our strength, energy, and essentially life itself has been drained from us, we have two options. We can let our soul wither and die, or listen to the spiritual instinct telling us to pick it. Once we reach this point, we finally give God the control but we demand for him to fix us, to make us alive again. And as someone who has been here and done that exact thing, both voluntarily and reluctantly, I can never remember it being instantaneous. I never woke up the next day completely restored, restored anew. It's a slow process and one that requires a little pruning and primping of my soul, plucking out the hard, heavy grudges that weigh me down, painfully yanking out each and every claw that has been (coughs) used to pierce others and a few that have been left in me, breaking off my beak that has turned everything I taste bitter, cleanse myself and prepare myself and my soul to wait, 
But had the eagle just simply waited while doing nothing, he would have wound up dying anyway. He had to find water and food and keep his body ready and prepared for what he knew was on his way, his renewal. So as Christians, being told to wait for the Lord, perhaps this is a state of activity and expectancy for the promise that we know is coming. The, the eagle gets to its soaring state <clears throat> by majestically perching on an evergreen branch, surveying the landscape, looking for food. As a bird of prey, an eagle is always ready to hunt. Now suddenly the evergreen branch shakes. The eagle spreads its wings and launches into the air. Flapping and flapping of its wings, it flies towards the dark clouds. See, under those clouds is an updraft that's needed for soaring. The equal pressure from the updraft under its wings and the pressure above caused by the downdraft produces the lift necessary for flight. God designed <clears throat> the eagle's wings for doing just this, for soaring, not flying. Without stressed, <clears throat> sorry, without stretched wings, the eagle floats on the updraft to higher and higher heights. The eagle is not exhausted or weak from soaring, but before he launched into flight, he waited on the branches, exactly in the spot where he needed to be in order to achieve soaring. He was alert, aware, prepared, and ready. <clears throat> it also waited for the arrival of the wind. Once the eagle had flown into the clouds, its wings stopped flapping. He placed itself upon the wind current, and there he rested. Now the word wait has a range of meaning. It's not just a one-to-one -one correspondence with an English word. The range of meaning when understood as a whole is waiting on, looking to, and trusting in God. That sounds more like a process to me rather than a single action. In Psalms 103.5, it says, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? In other words, Isaiah 40.31 is suggesting that this renewal of strength is a full revitalization of form and function and that it's frequently repeatable. But this waiting, hoping, and trusting, and looking that we're doing has no strength-giving capability. It's merely putting us in the proper position and attitude for soaring when God sends our updraft. Hence, all the plucking and yanking, removal of anything that may create drag or resistance and prevent us from soaring. It is the means by which our ability to be carried by that updraft is renewed and enhanced, kind of like continually renewing feathers on an eagle's wings. Speaking of renewing feathers, while I was checking translations, I came across an interesting version, and it said, but they who trust in the Lord shall renew their strength, just as eagles will, will grow new plumes. It is also quite significant that this waiting and hoping and trusting is on the Lord and not specifically on any action that he may take, deliverance he may bring, but simply on him personally. He is the object of our waiting and hoping and trusting and looking. Whatever he does will be for our benefit, and he intends for us to experience his blessings as an expression of his love. But the object of our focus should be on him and his awesomeness. An attitude which can wait for the God of the ages and his plan will gain strength to rise above the moment, to not tire and not faint, but to go on and on. The figure of the eagle's wings is quite apt. The soaring eagle is borne aloft not by the wings, but by the wind's currents lifting his rigid pinions. Those waiting are those prepared to be lifted up and carried aloft by the Spirit of God in his time and in his way. One last thought. The eagle is the king of birds. It soars the highest into the heavens. Believers are to live a heavenly life in the very presence and love and joy of God. They are to live where God lives, but they need strength to rise there. Do you know how the eagles are taught the use of their wings? Watch, high up on a ledge on the rock, there's an eagle's nest with its treasure of two young eaglets. Watch the mother bird with her beak. She'll push the timid birds over the precipice. They'll flutter and fall and sink towards the depths, but watch now. She spreadeth abroad her wings, swoops down, taketh them, and beareth them on her wings. And so as they ride, she brings them to a place of safety. 
So you fear and you tremble as all your strength fails you and you feel utterly weary and helpless. All he asks is that you should sink down into your weariness and wait on him. Allow him in his Jehovah strength to take you and carry you as you ride upon the wings of his omnipotence. Awesome. And you've been through that yourself. Yes, <laughs> I have. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, let me just say, if, if anyone would like a copy of this CD of your testimony, and maybe we could make a copy also of, of this uh, Absolutely, yes. teaching, that if they will, if you'll just simply write us at uh, King of Saints Tabernacle. Again, our address here is 2228 FM 1725, Cleveland, Texas 77328. If you want to just call, our telephone number here at our assembly is 281-592-4104. That's 281-592-4104. And Dawn, this poem, just it's just awesome. <laughs> and, I mean, it, it's true. It's, it's not. It, he bears us up. He um, does. Sometimes he makes us, uh, kicks us off the perch, <laughs> and we think we're falling, but he'll never leave us or forsake us. Um, the Bible says he'll he'll bear us up with you know with eagles' wings, and uh, he'll give his angels charge over us to bear us absolutely. up. Absolutely, he and just wraps those wings around us. I mean, that's our safe ab- haven, absolutely. our safety net. You know, you were mentioning uh, in your own life how that that this poem. Um, like maybe where you've you've bit other people or you know mm. you're hurt and you and but you let that go right yes. uh because you you get hurt but you don't re, you you got to let bitterness rank or just Absolutely. go go and uh and it's not our story we couldn't do it we would burn out and you know we would be just totally incinerated if we didn't learn to trust like yes. well, uh, <laughs> that scripture keeps coming to my mind they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength Mm. as in eagles amen and uh, you know i wonder it's amazing this is the actual fact that you're reading yes uh, and uh, <laughs> what students and i mean this is i guess proves us the inspiration of scripture because who knew in biblical times all those things that eagles went through uh, he this, knew <laughs> when he wrote it yeah we knew it <laughs> he did but we have studied it scientifically yes and it's almost miraculous but it, this is a a tangible example mm. i guess in nature of what yahweh can do for us uh supernaturally yes amen it is it's beautiful well where it, did you run, run into this poem it was awesome i i i, I, I wrote it I, you wrote it i did oh <laughs> I, I sat down and so i got out, out my here. bible and and i just wrote it awesome so. But these facts, where did you do uh, the research? facts? I was, you know, what it was was I, um, I read that scripture and I asked my mom. I said, "Mom, why eagles?" Right. Rather than any yeah. other bird, and I researched that and I typed in um, uh, eagle symbolism or you know stuff like that, and it brought me to a random wiki facts page about oh eagles. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Look at this! Awesome. This is everything that that we." That we do, you know, you that know. we need to do in order to renew our strength. And suffering is so tiresome. Absolutely. Well, you know, it, it encouraged me because we're getting a little older. You know, Marianne and I, I'm thinking, my goodness, you know, I guess, uh, you know, we don't have much longer. But here an eagle mm-hmm. lives about as long as a human being. Mm-hmm. And yet in the midst of, of his getting older, he renews his strength. Absolutely, yes. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I want to say that everything doesn't belong to just the kids. Because like Moses was like eighty. <laughs> Abraham, you were talking earlier. Abraham was seventy five. Daniel <laughs> and Daniel, you know, when he was cast in the lion's den. Yes. And I had never thought about what. But when you get thrown into a lion's den, I fell off a uh, out of a doorway today. I guess I fell maybe four or five feet, and uh, I got up. I don't feel any. But I thought, my goodness, how far did Daniel fall? Mm. And yet the Lord was there for him. And and Don, you've had your falls. But God was there to bear you up in physical heartache and being rejected by your your husband and, and having a child die in your your arms. You're proving the victory, Dawn, mm. of what <laughs> Yahweh can do. 
Is and there just, anything in closing you'd like to say? We've got about four minutes left. I really, I just want to emphasize the fact that that we fall and we feel like we're falling and and we right. feel like I, I mean, literally, there were times when I could not see a way out of what I was going through. There was no way this was going to get better. I don't, right. I don't know <laughs> what kind of of magic he might bring, but there's no way it can get better. But I all the falling that I did and all of the, the, the darkness that, that I was suffering through, not once did I ever fall all the way and, and get lost in the darkness. He never dropped me. He never lost me. He was always there to pick me up at the exact moment that he needed to pick me up in order for me to further the glory of his kingdom. And that's what this is about. That's what my testimony is about yeah. is if one person gets a ticket to heaven because of my son dying and me right. getting cancer, it was all worth it. You know, Dawn, just one of these issues that you faced, I mean, having cancer, um, losing your husband, having a baby die in your arms, uh, your child that, that has Down syndrome, and yet he was here the other night, and he's a blessing. <laughs> he's wonderful. He's in, <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Oh, he is on fire. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. Uh, Dawn, we may get some response. Would you be willing? Uh, maybe there might be somebody that would like to write and say, Dawn, can you give me some suggestions? Please. Would you be willing to respond? Oh, absolutely. I would be honored to okay. help. And yes, that's what I want to do is well, his work. Let yeah. me let me tell everybody that if you want a free copy of this, uh, this CD, uh, just call us here at King of Saints Tabernacle and we will we'll furnish a, f a free copy. Uh, to you upon request. Again, our phone number is 281-592-4104. Um, if you want to write, it's King of Saints Tabernacle, 2228 FM 1725, Cleveland, Texas, 77328. And Dawn has risen up on eagle's wings. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you're a young woman. you still got a lot ahead of you, but uh, let me just say, you know, a lot of people are mad at God. You mm. could be mad mm. at God. Well, look what you did. Uh, but, yeah, you haven't given up on the Lord. You've trusted him, and he's been there for you, right, Dawn? Uh, I, I agree with that. I was I was mad at God, and sometimes I still get mad at him, but that just gives him an opportunity to prove me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> It does. It gives him the, the chance to say, hey, wake up. You know, I didn't do this. I'm here to save you. Amen. So he, he hasn't dropped you. He hasn't gotten mad because no, you've mad at him. He's going to snub you. He's always been there for you, right, Don? Absolutely. You reach yes. out. You feel the upward current. Well, I see our time is gone. Let me just say that Don has put her faith in Yeshua as her personal Savior and Lord. Amen. And uh, that doesn't mean that if you trust him, you'll never have some issues no. in life to face. <laughs> Amen. But he, it does mean that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Hmm. Is that true, Don? You, he's never left you. He's never he's, left me. Amen. He's never forsaken me. Amen. He's, he's always, always been, been there. <laughs> always. There may be somebody listening to the sound of our voice that could just pray to him just a simple prayer, something like this. Say, Father in heaven, I... I know that I need a Savior. I, I need to have that, that updraft of the power of the Holy Spirit lifting me out of my depression, out of my hopelessness. Mm. And, Father, if I've never done this, I want to put my faith in Yeshua. Trust Him, for He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. We just pray that as this word goes out, that hearts and minds will be touched and hearts will be encouraged in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen.